of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope in the world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may follow your commands and proclaim your reign of love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today our reading comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John. John wrote, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go into Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone you, and are you are going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Thus he spoke, and then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awake him out of sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest from sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to see Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give to you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying, Quietly, the teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary, when she came to where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, Oh, see how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you hear me always, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that you did send me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages and his face wrapped with the cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Now many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In reading this scripture from St. John, we see that after much disturbance was caused in Jerusalem by Jesus' teaching and healing there, he and his disciples left that city. They walked quite a distance until a message arrived to Jesus that some close friends had some serious troubles. You see, his friend Lazarus had fallen seriously ill. And Jesus was asked to come and heal him, just like he had done for the blind man in Jerusalem. Jesus at first waited a few days until the time was right, and then he said to his disciples that they were going back to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, back to that suburb of Jerusalem, where Jesus could be within the reach of evil persons who sought to harm him. Just then, a response came from Thomas, spoken to the rest of the disciples. Let us go also, that we may die with him. Now, as we hear that sentence read from our Bibles, we are free to take that statement in several ways. Since we do not know for certain the look on the disciple's face or the thoughts in his mind as those words were spoken, they may have been pliant words of agreement. They might have been speaking fear. With his mind racing, Thomas may have questioned the wisdom of turning back. However, given that students of Scripture should already know the reputation of doubting Thomas, I present to you another thought. You see, the words of Thomas sound rather cynical. Now, for those who wonder what this means, a cynic can be defined as a person who looks at a gift of flowers made to him and immediately asks, who died? I think that Thomas recognized the great danger in turning back and quite cynically spoke those words, possibly under his breath. Cynics. Expect the worst. Now, these vacillating words spoken out in his emerging attitude appeared to be inserted secondhand by the author of John's Gospel. At first, they may seem just to be some grumbling words that can be tossed off and are not really relevant. However, as baptized Christians, we know that if we confess our faithlessness, God forgives us and speaks to us clearly through his word. You see, what may have seemed to be a bit confusing is written in this reading, not worthy to be part of scripture. 
was most assuredly prophetic. As scripture reveals to us, Thomas would go with Jesus, our Lord. Thomas would be a witness as Jesus was arrested, crucified, and killed. And Thomas would still be quite cynical about our Lord's resurrection, but then once being brought by Jesus to believing the truth, as tradition tells us, this disciple would declare the good news and die as a martyr in boldly making that declaration. As we read more of this in John, this gospel becomes quite clear. For just as Jesus went and raised his friend Lazarus, so too Thomas was raised up. He will be with Jesus when we see that all things ultimately shall unfold according to God's plan. So I say to you all, though we are sometimes quite cynical, sometimes doubting and sometimes foolish, let us first of all be his disciples. Let us follow Thomas just Follow Jesus just as Thomas did. I echo to you the words of Thomas. Let us also go that we may die with him. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore.